Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to discuss working with Harlow 3.3 in the macros of dropdown and checkbox. So as we've seen across a number of videos when working with input, we can get input and data from users in different ways. If we want a single sentence or a single line of input, we can use the input macro. If we want multiple lines, we can use input box. Sometimes though, we want to present a choice of things and for that, we can use two, two different macros covered in this video. So let's go ahead and pull up example one and we'll look at dropdown. The dropdown macro, similar to what we saw with the input and input box macros, uses the bind keyword. We can bind to whatever the user or player chooses. For this though, when we present dropdown, we supply a list of things separated by a comma. So in this case, I have elf, or elf gnome, and orc. These will be the choices of the dropdown. And the user or player can choose one of them and then we will see the result of that. So let's go ahead and start the story from this point. I will build and play. And notice we have a dropdown where I can see all of my choices and choose a single one of them. Notice I can't choose multiple options. I have to choose one from the set, but I have a dropdown to choose from them. And if I click on see result, we will see you chose no. So using the dropdown, we can pick one from a group. So we know we have a group of things and they are exclusive. That is, we're picking one from that group. We can use a dropdown. Alternatively, if we want to either something to be true or false, or that is, we want to check or uncheck something, we can use the checkbox macro. In this case, if we want to see if somebody's wearing a helmet or not, or working with something or not, or has something or not. If we can phrase it in that way, then we want a checkbox. In this case, we are working with the values true or false, which are special keyword values carried over to Harlow from its parent language of JavaScript. In this case though, we're also, as we've seen, working with bind. We are binding to a particular variable. The previous example, we were binding to the temporary variable beginning, in this example, we are binding to the temporary variable helmet. So let's go ahead and change the story to start from this point, and let's go ahead and build and play this. So when we're using the checkbox, we have true if checked or false if not checked. So notice we have a big old checkbox right here. If we click on it, notice it's now clicked, put on helmet, we see result, you are wearing a helmet. So let's refresh, and now I won't click on it, see result, your head remains unprotected. So we need to be careful when using checkbox. Notice it says is true, or we use else macro right here for the alternative. So when we're working with the dropdown macro, we can choose one from a set. If we're working with the checkbox macro, we can choose on or off, true or false. Both of them allow us to continue to get input from users or players. As we've seen with input and input box, we can use now drop down or check box, depending on the data we want to present and how we want people to choose. We want one from a group drop down. If we want yes or no, true or false, we want check box. Thanks for watching.